Hi there, it's Mr. Hegarty here. It's been a long time since I've made a video, but I'm making a video for my AS students who are studying uh, Core 1 at the moment, and it's just uh, a few key themes I would like them to practice from chapters 1 and chapters 2. It's not all of everything that's in there, but it's just some of the key things I would like them to be super good at and super quick at. So my Year 12s, I would like you to take full notes for these uh, seven questions. Anyone else is, uh, is welcome to try the questions and watch my methods for solving them. Okay, in 10 seconds, I'm going to go through the answers to these questions. You may want to pause the video and try them yourself to test yourself against them. Okay, so let's start. There are seven problems here, and I will start by going through the first three. So here we go. We are asked to factorise this expression here. It is, of course, a quadratic expression. So when we factorise, we're going to uh, put uh, the expression into two brackets as follows. Now, the way I do this, I look at this one here, this term, 3x squared, and I realise that the only things that multiply to 3x squared, um, or the whole numbers, uh, will be uh, a 3x and a single x. Then what I do is I don't worry about the 10 at the moment. What I do then is I look at this negative 8. And I ask myself what multiplies to negative 8. Forget about the negative now. Just think about 8. It's either 1 and 8 and it's 2 and 4. Because they are the only factors uh, of 8. So it's one of these uh, pairs of numbers there. One's got to be negative and one's got to be positive. So I'm just going to try. Now... Think to yourself, I want the answer to be positive 10x. So I would like to get a really big positive number of x's and then I would like to take away some small number of x's to leave me with positive 10x. So that's making me think to myself, well, why don't I put a positive 4 here and why don't I put a negative 2 here? And then this turns out to what I need. Now, always when you're doing these, double check the answer. 3x times x is indeed 3x squared. 3x times positive 4 is positive 12x. Um, negative 2 multiplied by x is negative 2x. And negative 2 multiplied by positive 4 is negative 8. These two combine to give me what I wanted in the question. So that's my check method. This is my answer. Then question 2. It says solve... Uh, so this is an equation now. Before this was just an expression, you could factorise it. Now you can solve 3x squared, add 10x, uh, subtract 8, equals 0. Now just before I do that, what I'm going to do is, I would encourage you always, whenever you're dealing with quadratics and asked to work anything out, I would always ask you to sketch the quadratic. It's just really good practice. Now, the roots of this quadratic... Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually find here. So I will show you that. If you're trying to solve this, what you would do is step one, if you can, you would factorise. Then you've got two expressions multiplying together equals zero. So either the first expression is zero or the second expression is equal to zero. In the first case, you add two to both sides and divide by three, you would get x is two thirds. And in the second case, you subtract 4 from both sides, so you would get x is negative 4 as a solution. So let's draw this graph then. It's positive x squared graph, so it's a u shape. Okay, so we know it's a u shape. It has roots at 2 thirds and negative 4. So it's got a root over here at negative 4, and it's got a root somewhere here at 2 thirds. And it's a u shape, so it will look something like this here. We also know that when, if I put x is 0 in, uh, we get y is negative 8. So if I put x is 0 in, I would get y is negative 8. So I know 0, negative 8 must be this point here. Just good practice to do that. OK, now we're asked to solve the quadratic 3x squared, add 10x, add 4 is 12. Now the techniques we have only allow us to solve quadratics when they are equal to zero. So the first thing I'm going to do is manipulate this quadratic, subtract 10 off both sides to make the right hand side zero. So I'm going to get myself 3x squared, add 10x, take away 8 is zero. 
And oh look, it's exactly like the ones I did in the first example, which I have factorised and then hence solved, and I can just state the answers here. I don't have to go through all the working again. And they're the first three questions. Okay, moving on to the next ones. We are asked to complete the square and state the vertex uh, of that graph. Okay, now first completing the square. This is a little bit tricky. You've got to follow me through here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go write down the question. So we have 3x squared add 10x take away 8. Now, the first thing I want to do, completing the square is easy for equations like, like this. It's easy for equations like this. What we do is we create a bracket and put a square. We put an x in here. We put an we half this number here, so we would the half of positive 10 is positive 5. We square 5 in our heads, we get 25. We don't want the 25, we subtract it off. And don't forget, we keep the subtract 8. So we would have written this as x plus 5 squared, a negative 25, subtract another 8 is negative 33. And we'd be done. Now the problem with this one, the slight difficulty, is the coefficient in front of the x squared. It's 3, it's not 1. So it makes our life one step more complicated. So let me show you how to do this one. First thing you do is you factor out or factorise a 3 from each term so that it looks inside like a nice just 1x squared. So watch, take out a factor of 3, put a nice big square brackets there. What are we left with? Well, 3x squared divided by 3 is x squared. 10x divided by 3 is 10 thirds x. And negative 8 divided by 3 is negative 8 over 3, as follows. Now, with the expression we have inside our square brackets, we can do what we did over here. It's just we've got fractions and it's a tiny bit more confusing. But we can keep the 3 there. Do not drop the 3. The 3 must be multiplied back in at the end. Now, we do brackets. We put a square. We put an x. Half of 10 thirds is 10 sixths. If we divide 10 thirds by 2, it's like dividing by another 2 on here, so it's like 10 sixths. We square 10 sixths in our head, which is 100 over 36, which we subtract. And then we sub keep the subtract 8 thirds, close that square brackets. Now what we would like to do is we need to tidy up this expression here. It would be good to tidy up that expression there to make it a combined fraction. So let's make them both out of 36 because to, we need common denominators here. So I'm going to multiply that by 12 and multiply that by 12. So I'm going to write myself here, keep that 3 there, keep that square brackets, leave this as it is because we're not touching this at the moment. And this is negative 100 over 36. Take away, well, if I multiply top and bottom by 12, I would get myself 96 over 36. OK, then what I do is I'm going to combine these. So this is 3 brackets, x add 10 over 6 squared. And then this is going to be subtract 196 over 36 like that. OK, we are nearly there. I'm just going to move this down a little bit. We are very close to being there. So then what I want to do is I, I want to potentially simplify this fraction. OK, well, before I do that, maybe what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the 3 back in. So I'm going to multiply the 3 by this term and by this term. So what we're going to get, we're going to get 3x add 10 over 6 squared take away. Now, if I multiply this by 3, remember 36 is actually 3 times 12, so it could cancel with the 3 on the bottom. So what we would get ourselves is 196 over 12. Still a bit more work to go. We always have to end up by simplifying our fractions. So this 10 over 6, by the way, well, the top and bottom have a factor of 2. You can divide a factor of 2 off top and bottom, and we would get 3 x add 5 over 3 squared like that. Now, the question is, what's the biggest factor that goes into 196 and 12? If I divide the top and bottom by 4, 
If we divide the top by 4, I'm sure we get the answer 49. If we divide the bottom by 4, we get the answer 3. And that is our final answer. Now, the great thing about completing the square is that it gives you the vertex of the graph almost for free. You look at this number and you look at this number here. And the vertex of the graph, the minimum point of the graph, or the maximum, is always the, the opposite sign of this number and that number as it is. So the vertex is going to be negative 5 thirds and it's going to be negative 49 over 3. Going back to our previous page where we drew this, that kind that would be there. So negative 5 thirds, negative 49 over 3, like that, and it looks reasonable. Okay, uh, finishing this off then, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, solve this uh, linear inequality. Nice and easy, this one. Uh, just like equations, just make sure you keep your inequality sign. What I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 2x off both sides to get all the x's uh, combined. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to add 2 to both sides as follows. So on the left hand side I'm going to get 10 bigger than or equal to 3x. I'm going to divide both sides by 3 and I get myself x is smaller than or equal to 10 over 3 like that. You could write it the other way around, keeping the x with the smaller bit. You could write the x first as long as you've got the smaller than or equal to bit beside the x and you could write it that way around. They mean the same. And lastly, let's solve this. This is a quadratic inequality. So these are how you do this. First step is you try to factorise. And we can factorise this. It is x and x. We're thinking of numbers that multiply to we're thinking of numbers that multiply to negative 12 and add up to negative 1. It's the numbers that will do the trick for us are uh, f negative 4 and 3. So we have x take away 4, x add 3 is bigger than 0. Now let's try and draw this graph knowing that we know the roots. It's u-shaped. Okay, The roots of the graph are x equals 4 and x equals negative 3. So we just do a sketch. The roots are at x is 4 here, x equals 4, and x is negative 3 here. We know it's a U-shaped graph, so we draw a U-shaped graph like this. Just out of interest, do we know the coordinates of this point here? Yeah, we do. If, if this was the graph y equals x squared, subtract x, subtract 12, and we substitute, remember this is the x-axis, this is the y-axis. If we substituted in here x is 0, we would get that y is negative 12, so that must be 0, negative 12. Okay, anyway, we want to find where this graph, where the green line, is above the x-axis, is bigger than 0. So we are interested in two regions. Here is certainly where, it, where the graph is above the x-axis, and here is where the graph is above the x-axis, in two places. Because we're dealing with a bigger sign, we copy that. So this is for all these points here, i.e. x bigger than 4, and at the same time, all the points this side of negative 3, so all the values x less than negative 3. And we're done for this video. I hope you found that useful in your revision. Thanks for watching.